All right, so uh, I'm also going to record this. I'm going to post it on YouTube after. So uh, if there's any questions or if you want to look back and kind of see uh, certain things, then you'll be able to see that as well. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, links, and I'm going to be sharing those in the chat. So make sure to keep that open. I'm going to try and make this as short as I can. I already did one so uh, this, this week, so... Um, uh, I'm not a pro, but uh, I, I've already done one. So um, so I definitely know what talks out right away. Uh, let's get into it. Well, uh, first, I always started my, the meetings this way. Um, I want to say thank you to you. Uh, this is really a dream come true for me to be able to do something that I am so passionate about and be fortunate enough to uh, do this full time. And not only that, but my goal is to give that gift to someone else, to all the other coaches that we have. So hopefully making them full time as well. That's kind of the goal. And, uh, you know, it, it's very tough to make a living in soccer in Canada. So I'm trying to uh, to change that. I'm going to start out by telling you a little bit about who we are. We have a lot of new players, as you've seen, um, the growth of the academy um has been incredible and uh we actually started eight years ago um in 2017 it was kind of like 2016 summer and our first team was in 2020 and since then every single year we've had more teams so there's constant growth even between winter and summer so uh in the summer we had seven teams and now we have nine teams so bigger and bigger every year uh, which is a testament to, you know, our coaches, our philosophy, and also you guys, you know, for telling your friends. And I'm really proud of the fact that we created a family atmosphere here at Gladiator and players, uh, you know, are kind to one another. And those are the things that I'm going to be talking about uh, a little bit later on. But for me, when I opened the Academy eight years ago, it was really the fact that I wasn't really impressed with what was going on in Canada. It was a lot of team approach, right? So there would be one team and the team was the most important thing. And I felt that wasn't right. I felt that it shouldn't be a team approach, but it should be a player approach, a player centered approach, meaning that your child should be the most important thing. And I wanted to create a program where every child was going to get better and that every child was going to develop throughout their soccer career rather than just playing on a team. And if there were better players that came on, that they would get cut, right? I don't want to do that. And I'm really proud to say that I haven't really cut a player in the eight years that we've been here. So um, once a player is on our team, we continue to have them on our team, and, and I'm very proud of that. Soccer for me growing up was really unique. Um, I moved around a lot. I moved probably every three years from grade one all the way up to uh, university. And for me, uh, soccer was used as a way that when I moved to a new place, I made friends. So when I moved to Chicago, I joined a soccer league and that's where I met my friends. And then when I moved to Kansas, uh, that was before we even moved. My dad and I sat on the computer, I remember sitting on his lap and we would look for teams in Kansas. And as soon as I got there, the second day we were there, found a team and that's how I made friends. And for me, that was always something really important that soccer was more than just a game. It was really a tool for me to make friends. And I took that with me. And now soccer for me is a tool that we use to create good people. At the end of the day, this is just a game. So we use it to create leaders, to create creative people, and just good people all around that can go out into the world after their youth career is done and just crush it, be leaders in their industry, and just really change the world. That's really what we want. 
I'm going to start by talking about the leagues um, and what's going on. Um, even for our older players, this is completely brand new. So there are two different types of leagues this year. There is what's called the York Region Soccer Association, which is located in York Region. And they are running the league this year. And they are running the league with us, Toronto, Scarborough. So it's those three that are coming, and sorry, in North York. So four districts are coming together and we are making a mega district. So just because it's a York region run district, it's actually everywhere. So there are going to be games everywhere. And this right here, this York region, it's for everyone U12 and under, okay? So U12 and under. So that means if you are, sorry, it's actually gonna be U11 for us. If you are 2014 born and younger, this is where you are playing. You are playing here. The other option is the PISL. Now the PISL is a uh, provincial league which means that it runs throughout the whole Ontario province, okay? And this is for us, sorry, this is for us U13 and up, okay? So if you are born 2012 and also 2013 and older, this is where you are playing, okay? I'm gonna talk about the schedule and all that a little bit later on. Our team tier, you'll see them as follows. So in the 2017, we're going to be playing tier four. That's U8. 2016 is U9. Our 2015, uh, 14 are going to have a tier four team. And then they're also going to have a tier two team. The tier four team is the blue team. The tier two team is the orange team. Okay. And we're doing the same thing with our 2012 team. We have an orange team and a blue team. They are both playing in the same league though, in the same these two. Then we have uh, U14 playing in the PISL, the U15 in the PISL, uh, and then the U16 in the PISL. Any questions so far? Good. Okay. Um, and if you do have any questions, please put your hand up throughout the, the presentation. I have no problem uh, stopping and, and clarifying some things. I want to talk about games, uh, and then after that, we'll talk about schedule and everything. If you are on the team, which means everyone here, you are guaranteed at least 50% playing time. You will play at least half the game. Okay. However, there are going to be players that play more than 50%. Now, there are a couple of different factors that affect that. Firstly, number of practices. So if a player is committed three times a week, they're probably going to get more playing time than someone who's coming twice a week. Um, that's just, that's fair, right? Um, now, having said that, most players should be three times a week here uh, within our academy. But even if you are not and you are twice a week, you are still guaranteed at least 50% playing time. And that's a philosophy within all of our coaches, within all of our teams. That's number one. Number two is the coaching rotation that we have. So what you're going to experience is probably a lot of different coaches that are going to come in and coach. Now, what I'm really proud of, and as you've seen in training, is that all of our coaches coach all of our players. So all our players know all our coaches and all our coaches know all our players. And that for me is something really unique. And again, that's more of a player-centered approach. And what this does is that it allows the coaches at the end of every session to come up to me and I sometimes even go and talk to them and they'll tell me, hey, listen, so-and-so is ready to move up. And that allows that player to move up, right? So we have that environment where it allows players to constantly be challenged over and over again. And as a result, the players all know the coaches. And I'm really happy that a lot of players know other players that are super old, right? So a lot of our 2009s know some of our 2014s and 15s and all that. So it's a really family environment which again, I'm super proud of. All of our games are going to be either Saturday or Sunday. I think most games are going to be on Saturday. Um, there are going to be some Sunday. Now, I also learned that um, 
for the PISL, which means U13 and up, uh, probably mainly the U12, only the U13. Um, there are going to be one or two games that are far. So an hour and a half and maybe even two hour drives. So this weekend, for example, one of our teams is playing in Hamilton. So that's a drive. And I think there's also a London team as well that's part of the PISL. So um, those are games that, you know, we'll have to drive down. But you're not going to be driving down more than once or twice a year. So um, that's really important. Good. I do want to talk a little bit about the blue and the orange team, which only really affects uh, four teams. That's the age groups from 2013, sorry, 2015, all the way up till 2012. The blue team is mainly uh, the younger team, so mainly a 2015 team and a 2013 team with some of our newer 2012 and some of the 2012 that um, we feel are not at the level to play with other players of their likeness. The blue team is going to really get a different type of game uh experience and the reason for that is again because it's player centered so what we're going to do now with the blue team is something that i've wanted to do for such a long time and we're going to be playing something that we call one touch two touch move which means that when a player gets the ball they have three options they either take one touch on the ball and they pass it right back or they decide to take two touches one touch to control one touch to pass but if they decide to take more than two touches, they're going to be doing a move. And if they don't do that and they just uh, dribble, dribble, dribble without doing a move, then they'll be subbed off, right? And the idea here is to develop the individual greatness and what we call the money skills. So all the skills that we do in 1v1 that you've seen us work so hard with the players, that is going to be the focus of the blue team. And it's something that no one does in Ontario and Canada except for us. Because again, your child is the most important thing. So what we want for them is to really be able to take on players 1v1 and feel very, very conf confident with that. So we're looking for about a 60% success rate. So when they get the ball six out of 10 times, they should be able to beat the player 1v1. The orange team is made up of players who are at that 60, or usually they're at about 70 to 80% when they have that ball. They're able to beat players right away. And that's the difference. Okay, uh, The orange team is gonna be playing in tier two, uh, and then the blue team is gonna be playing in tier four. That's our 2015, 14, and then our 2012 and 13, they're gonna be playing in the same league, same district, same everything. The only difference is the blue team we're going to have a much more uh, individual development uh, approach to them. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, league payment. This is the most important thing. I'm going to put this in the chat. If you have not paid the $340 for the league, it's a one-time fee Okay, for the league. Um, I just put it into the chat. Please go on there and pay for it. Um, that lump sum is coming out of our pocket until we get that back. So it's a lot of money with nine teams. So please do that as soon as possible. The season in the 340 is from now until the end of May. So it's a long time until uh, the outdoor season. Uh, next thing. 2013s and 2015s, because they're playing up, you will need to sign a fast tracking player evaluation form. You do not have to worry about that. I'm going to bring that on Sunday. Please be there on Sunday. Everybody, please come to the session on Sunday, especially 2015s, 2013s, um, so you can do the, uh, so you can sign the form, if not Wednesday. Okay, uh, so you don't need to worry about downloading it. I know that some already have and sent it back to me. That's great. Don't worry about it. I'm going to deal with everything. Okay. 
be this is the most important thing here. Well, I keep saying that, but there's gonna be a lot of important things. Okay. Where are you? Okay. I'm gonna show you now how to uh how to find the schedule. So within the schedule, we will be working with an app and I'm going to send an email and I'll talk a little bit about that later. But this is another way for you to find the schedule. So remember, if you are, shouldn't be 12, 2014 and younger, then you are going to be using the York Region Indoor Soccer League. If you are U13, 2013 and older, you are going to be using the PISL.ca. These are both the exact same systems. So I'm gonna go in and show you exactly how to use it. You're simply gonna go into games, sorry, into my team. Okay, you're looking for your team here. You're going to select team. You're gonna get this window here. And then you're gonna look up GSA, okay? This is the GSA. So we are Gladiator Soccer Academy. Gold is the orange team, silver is the blue team. Okay, so let's say the U9s because they've got a game coming up. I'll click save team. Your team selected, your, your selected team has been saved. I go back to my team and I look at team schedule. And here are the games. Okay, now to find the location, it'll say field. I will click the field and it'll open up and you'll see here, it's not the right address, but that'll take you to where the hangar. Okay. You'll see at the hangar, it'll say number four, and that's where you're at. Okay. I'm going to do the exact same thing at the PISL. I go to my team, select team. GSA, I'll go down to maybe the U15, save team. My team, team schedule. There it is, same thing. Okay, and there's the field. Any questions? Any questions? This is no. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to be so in the past, uh, we've used WhatsApp to talk to parents and uh, we've had groups for teens. We're not going to do that anymore. Uh, there, uh, so if you were a part of the WhatsApp group, I'm going to close it and it's going to be done. We're going to be using TeamSnap. That's going to be available next week. I have to work on that. Um, so uh, hold on. Let me just let Diego in. So next week, we're going to be using TeamSnap. TeamSnap is a way to, uh, it's going to have the full schedule of the team. It's going to have options for chats. Uh, you'll be able to take pictures and videos and share that with each other as well but we are not doing WhatsApp anymore. That is not going to be a thing. Um, I might, I'll probably still send out emails. Also on TeamSnap, it'll, sh it'll allow you to say if you're going to make the game or not, okay? Which is very important for us as well uh, to let us know if you will or will not make the game. Okay. Uh, Jersey Bird. Um, these are jerseys. If you don't have a jersey yet, Please bring $60 in cash to the next practice, um, and I will give your child a jersey. Pretty simple. The other option, I know there have been parents that have been asking um, for anything like uh, other training equipment or bags or things like that. We do have an option for that. My thing has always been that I want to focus on the soccer, whether we have Nike stuff or not Nike stuff, that doesn't really matter to me. Um, so I want to keep the cost down. So if you want more, go to more GSA store. Okay. You'll see here again, it'll say shop, shop, click it, and then this will open. Okay, and then this is all the stuff that we have. These aren't anything really. You can get hoodies, whatever you want. But um, bags are here. 
This is the one that I have. It's a great bag. Had it for a very long time. These are the black shorts that we have in black socks. You don't have to buy the black shorts. Don't have to buy the black socks. But you can buy your own. If you don't want to spend the 27 or the 10 and you want to go get it, no worries. You can do that there. You want a pillow? We have a pillow. We got everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. Any questions on that? Good. Okay. We've already oh. spoken about this. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, just saying no questions. Okay. Um, we've already spoken about game time. Uh, this is my favorite thing. We have a lot of new parents that have never uh, coached with us. Uh, sorry, that played with us. Um, not, not. So I just want you to watch this here. Um, all right, here we go. Thank you, thank you. Every year in the United States, about 40 million children play youth sports. Yet 70% of those kids drop out and quit by the time they're 13 years old. Three out of four children are done with sports before high school. Now, as a person who's been involved in athletics his whole life, as a college and a professional soccer player, and a coach for the last 20 years, I wanted to know, why was this happening? Why do so many kids quit something that has made such a positive impact on my life? And then about three years ago, I realized the answer to that question, standing on the sideline of my five-year-old daughter Maggie's soccer game. Now, if you've ever seen five-year-old soccer, it's amazing. There's this giant scrum of players, <laughs> and it moves up and down the field, and there's lots of giggling and laughing. Sometimes a player breaks out and scores in the right goal. Sometimes she kicks it in the wrong goal. <laughs> Twice the chance of success. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, right? She's happy, parents are positive, everyone's supportive. Coaches are positive, there's no referee to yell at. This is what sports is supposed to be. Well, on this particular day, there was a 10-year-old boys game right next door. And it should be just the same, right? But it was completely different. It was a competitive 10-year-old boys game. And I say competitive in quotes because it wasn't the kids who were competing harder, it was the adults. A kid makes a bad pass, the ball gets stolen and the other team scores. And then all hell breaks loose. The coach jumps off his bench, he screams at the kid and he yanks him out of the game. Next, his dad is on the other sideline screaming at him. His, his, uh, Parent, his friend's parents, they're screaming at him. And as I'm watching this, I'm saying to myself, wow, this is exactly why children drop out of sports. Because sports is supposed to be about children playing and children having fun and learning. And none of that is happening here. Now, I want to just invite you for a moment to get into the mindset of a 10-year-old boy or any young athlete today, because it's very, very different than when I was growing up. You go to a game, and you're just going to play a game. But yet so many of the adults, they're acting like it's the World Series. <laughs> they're acting like it's the NBA Finals. And you're just there to play a game. There's coaches and parents screaming at you from the sidelines. Sometimes they're screaming at you, sometimes they're screaming at the referee, sometimes they're screaming at each other. <laughs> now you get in the car after the game, and you just want to relax and emotionally unwind, and yet, this is the time when so many parents choose to deconstruct your game and criticize and critique your performance. Now you sit around your kitchen table, and you hear your parents talking about the time and the financial commitment that it takes to play youth sports. Maybe you'll get a scholarship down the line to help pay for all this. And that just adds pressure and stress. And then finally, at the end of the year, the end of the season, when you're ready to move on to another sport, what happens? Your coach sits you down and says, uh-uh, you can't do that. You're not moving on. Because if you're going to stay on this team, you need to play year-round. And if you don't, I'm going to give your spot away. This is what so many children feel these days, this type of pressure. 
And that's why seven out of 10 of them quit youth sports. Seven out of 10 are done. Now, I call this the, the great giant race to nowhere in youth sports. And it's a race because so many kids and so many parents were in such a hurry to do more, more, more at younger and younger ages. And I say it ends nowhere because while we tend to focus on the few athletes who get a scholarship or turn pro, the vast majority end up somewhere else. They end up hating sports. They end up with damaged relationships with their parents. And for some kids, they end up with physical and emotional scars that last a lifetime. We have to end this great race to nowhere. We have to change the game in youth sports. We have to give it back to our kids. And today I want to tell you how we can do that. Now, some people say to me, oh, John, are you the anti-competitive guy? Trophies for everyone, no keeping score, no standings. Not, not at all. That is not me. I don't believe in participation awards. I don't think every kid who shows up should get a trophy just for doing the bare minimum. And as far as being competitive, I spent the last 20 years coaching elite youth soccer players. I spent four of those years as a Division I college men's soccer coach. So I know a little something about competitive athletes. And what I saw on that 10-year-old boys game, and what I see in so many sports all around the country, that is not it. These kids aren't becoming more competitive, they're not becoming better, they're becoming bitter. And they're dropping out of sports, seven out of 10 of them. Now what we've come to accept is this new environment in youth sports would never be acceptable anywhere else in life. We'd never accept it in our workplace, we'd never tolerate if our teachers treated our kids like this, and we would certainly never tolerate it if our children treated us in our events like we treat them. <laughs> Can you imagine what that would feel like in your golf game or your tennis match if our children <laughs> treated us? Well, <laughs> our friends at Hockey Canada, they've imagined such a thing. Check it out. Nice putt, Frank. Come on, Dad, focus. Why do you stand so little? Don't slouch. And don't screw up. This is the big league. What are you doing? Keep it on the ball. That was pathetic. <laughs> How sorry does he cut it? <laughs> does anyone need that kind of help in their golf game? <laughs> no. Awesome. So if we're going to change youth sports in this country, the first thing we have to remember is why children play. Now, Michigan State University did a huge study on this, about 30,000 kids. And they asked them, why do you play? And the number one reason why children play sports is because it's fun. They like to learn, they like to be with their friends, they enjoy the excitement, but they don't play because of winning. They like to win, they value winning, but it's not why they show up. It doesn't even make the top 10 on why they play. Now, by the same token, why did children quit sports? Children quit because they're sick and tired of being criticized and yelled at. They quit because they're afraid to make mistakes. And they quit because of an emphasis on winning, which leads to a lack of playing time for so many kids. And for others, it leads to all-star teams and thus cuts at seven, eight, nine years old, where we tell kids, you're not even good enough to play. Now, we can change the game in the United States by education. Now, what we do at my organization called the Changing the Game Project is we travel to schools and we travel to youth sports organizations. What we teach people is that the single greatest factor that affects performance is state of mind. And we give people the tools to instill what we call a positive, high-performing mindset in our athletes. We teach them things like accepting your kids' goals and giving them ownership of their experience. Good. Um... I show this at every meeting, uh, and I'm sure a lot of parents have seen this before uh, that have been with us. This is the most important. <laughs> See, I keep doing that. Um, you know, w when I was growing up, uh, my my dad would be the one that um, that would take me to games, and I'm sure for you know parents who were athletes, you can kind of relate to this. But for me. I don't remember winning, don't remember losing, 
don't remember the scores of the game, but as an adult now, I do remember the drives with my dad. And those were the times that I'll treasure forever. And this is a gift time that you can spend with your child in the car and with the world the way it is which is tablets phones social media and all that that time in the car to practice the games it's a really really important thing and i mean my dad was guilty of what he was saying which is you know get into the car and right away talk about the game but I don't remember those times. I remember the drive. And when he continues, what he says is the most important thing is that you should enjoy watching your child play. And this is one of the only times where you can see your child excel at something struggle at something. Sorry. Struggle at something and really be able to watch and enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Because when they go to school and they take exams and you know they do math problems and here and there, you can't be there to watch those moments. So this is really unique opportunity. And what we do as the coaches is we make sure not to take that away from you. So what I always tell parents, because you are the most important thing at the game, is we want you to cheer. We want you to be the loudest person in the world. And we love that. But it's what you say that is so important. Because if you say something and I say something, the child's going to hear you first. You are the parent. So what we want is cheer. And the way that we differentiate between that is cheering is something that you do for something that has happened, not something that hasn't happened yet. So if we take shooting, for example, right? If Johnny takes a shot, right? It's saying great shot versus when Johnny has the ball, yelling at them to shoot the ball, right? So we don't want to yell the things that the child hasn't done yet. We want to give them the opportunity to make their decisions. And then the great thing is, is that you can be there as the parent when things go wrong and you can be the one that helps pick them up. And that develops such a great relationship because they know they can rely on. You. It's an opportunity for you to, when they get pushed, when they fall down, Get back up. It's okay. Right up. Right? Those types of nice try. Good shot. It's okay. You'll get him next time. And that is so powerful. Because think about the mind of a child in that situation. Oh, no, I missed. Someone going to get mad at me? And when they hear support, support, support from the parent, oh, so if I mess up, I know I can rely on my parent. And that's what we want. And as coaches... Our role is to do the same thing. We coach the players without the ball because we let the players with the ball make their own decision because the game is the exam. And what we don't want, if your child is taking a math test, is the teacher to be hovering. And before the child writes down the answer, the teacher goes, the answer is seven. And the child doesn't even get a chance to answer. So for us, since the game is the exam, we let the child make their own decision. We'll say things like possession, keep the ball, right? But that's not making their decision. They can pass the ball. They can dribble the ball. They can do whatever they want. Keep the ball. Reset, right? Do they need help? They have help. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Those are the two things. But that's it. Quick. Play quick, right? But it's not dribble the ball. It's not, we call that, uh, joystick coaching, right? Like you're you're playing uh, Xbox, right? And you're and you're actually playing as the player. That's not what we do as the coaches. We let them make their own decisions. The other thing is that we prioritize development. 
Okay. And for us, winning is not by the score. It's by your child getting better because your child is more important than the win. Okay. It's not about winning on the scoreboard. That doesn't matter. It's about your child getting better. Okay. And I think, whoops, oh, 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 oh. where did it go? If we can watch this. This should be one of our videos. Yeah. And we have proof. Okay. This isn't just stuff that we say. Possession. Okay. So you can hear me possession. This is our Cruyff turn. Right. And this is the way that we want our blue teams to play. Okay. You'll see here a Maradona coming up. These are all skills that we teach our players. This is with David, really great Maradona there. Okay, Ronaldo Chop. I think that might be David again. Yeah, that's one of his favorite moves there. A different player doing a Maradona turn. This is CN, right? So this was a game that we played that one touch, two touch move. And this is what we want for your child. Okay. So in this situation here, okay, a normal coach would say, kick it out, kick it out, kick it out. Right. Because if we lose the ball here, we get scored on. But that's okay. Because we're giving the opportunity to the child, right? Here, instead of get it out, get it out, get it out. It's try, be brave. Be brave. Be a leader on the field. Try something incredible, right? That's what we want for your child. Game time. Please arrive 40 minutes early, okay? 40 minutes early to the game. If you are late, please text me, okay? Games are going to be all over the place. There will be traffic, 100%. There will be traffic. So please factor that in. Okay. Um, yeah. Good. Players who are late, meaning they arrive after the 40 minutes, they are going to start off. So for us, success really looks like these things here. Again, not the scoreboard, but a player building resilience through failure, right? So when they fail, Okay, which is the power of failure, which is what we work on in our 1v1s during our sessions. This is on the Sundays right now. Okay, We're building that resilience of do a Maradona, fail, try again, try again, try again. It's okay to fail, right? And that is one of the most important skills in life, that how do we react when we fail? And this is one of the greatest things that we teach our players. Develop problem-solving skills, risk-taking. If we think about this video that we saw, the risk of trying this Maradona, the risk of trying two players on David, trying a Ronaldo Cha, okay? That is a player with resilience, problem-solving skills, risk-taking, persistence, adversity, all these characteristics of amazing people this is what we're building in our players. Okay. Um, let me get here. So, uh, every Monday night at 6.15, uh, except for next week, because I have a district meeting, um, we do a Zoom call. This Zoom call is where we go in and we watch back our game. This is the same Zoom that you are on. If you ever want to access this, this Zoom link, it's here. You go to gladiatorsoccericademy.com, one, two, three, right there. Okay, and it'll say the time here, 6.15, it's not 7.15, it's 45 minutes. Okay, what we do here, oops, where is that, there we go. What we do here, okay, uh, is we watch the games that we record. And 
we are working on getting more VOs. Um, so there will be more coaches able to record more games. Um, but this right now, uh, let me just show you how this is what we analyze. Let's go work on this. It sounds like to go to the other thing. VO. There we go. Okay. So these are games and we record the games. It does it automatically. It's a really cool system. Um, and this is what we watch. Now you as parents, you can actually go in and you can add a clip. So let's say I want to create create a new clip. I'll say maybe 1v1. Uh, and then you can add your child. So you put the add symbol. Uh, let's say uh, maybe Felipe. Okay. And then now at the bottom here, you'll see the timer. You can then create the clip there, and then it'll show that, right? And there's Felipe over there. And I'll click create clip. Then I'll go over here to clips. And then I can save it. Once I save it, then this will pop up these three dots. I'll click download and then it'll download. Okay. And then you can have that. So you don't have to. Um, what the calls, uh, you don't have to have video cam, uh, well, everything. And I'm going to send out, uh, the VO link as well. Um, that'll be something that I do next week. There's just a lot going on with, um, with registrations right now. So, uh, there is that. Okay. Goalkeepers, um, 2017, we don't have a goalkeeper yet. 20, 2012, sometimes we won't have a goalkeeper. Uh, 2000, I think that's it. If we don't have a goalkeeper, the coach will go and they will ask, they'll say, does anybody want to be a goalkeeper? The answer is no. We will pick someone and it'll be for a half. Okay. Uh, we will switch goalkeeper every half unless we have a goalkeeper. Uh, that's it. Okay. Good. Um, for those that don't know, I host a soccer podcast. It's called Coaching uh, Soccer Coaching Mastermind. Before that, I took over and hosted another podcast called Coaching Soccer Weekly, which is still up. Um, and on that, I interviewed a woman by the name of Amy Dirk, who is a nutritionist who works with kids, uh, specifically in sports. And we did two episodes, so 278 and 277, uh, talking about kids' nutrition, um, which was really great. Talked about exactly what to eat before games, practices, after games, all that. And it's a really great way to start the conversation with your kids about nutrition, which is really important. I know a lot of kids uh, eat, you know, junk food. So this is a really great way to do that. And you can do that in the car, right? Which is where you're going to be going to practice, going to games. So uh, this is something that you can do with them. Uh, and in the past, when we've done nutrition in, uh, in our camps, uh, we've had really good feedback from parents saying, oh my God, my child came home and they started talking to me about broccoli, right? So these are all amazing things um, that can happen with just listening to a podcast. Uh, and I love podcasts, not just because I run one, but I listen to podcasts all the time. Good. Next, uh, we are working with FIFA agents. So what we're looking for is uh, your child. We can go into the VO. Please make clip of about three minutes. Send that to me. And then we can forward it to the FIFA agents. Um, to get them noticed all around the world. Um, we work with agents from college and universities to people in Europe. Uh, if you do have those ambitions of going to play in Europe, there are lots of different factors, including uh, what your background is and stuff like that. So we'll obviously have a phone conversation or even just a chat in person before that. But um, that's a possibility for you. Other than that, that's it. 
kept it under an hour. So I'm proud of that. Uh, questions, any questions, please don't be shy. We've got uh, a lot of parents here. Um, so I'm sure people have questions. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I will stay back to answer any questions that you have. Um, let me just see who's on the call here. Okay. Um, the games this weekend are as follows. I just want to show you that while I'm here. Okay, it's only the PISL that are playing. Schedule. Okay, so here are the games this weekend, which are Saturday games and then Sunday games. So Saturday, which is tomorrow night, okay, the U14s are playing at 6, be there at 520. The uh, U16s, 7 p.m. Okay, U15s, 8 p.m. Okay. These are the field numbers, 224. Please be there early. Okay, there are some 14s playing up and there are some 15s playing up as well. On Sunday, this is the big game here. Okay, 1230. This is in Hamilton. This is for the blue team, 2012-2013. Okay, blue team. I don't know why that says, oh, because that's boys. Got it. Okay, so you'll see here blue. And then orange team, you are playing at Monarch at 10 a.m. I'm going to be coaching this one. Elia will be here doing that one. Okay. This is the important stuff. Next week, the U9s will have a game. And then okay, so next week uh we only have one team playing. It's the U nines. Their games are at three PM. I think that's a Saturday. I'm pretty sure it's a Saturday. And then um the league will start on the third of November. Games are not every week. I think uh in the younger ones, it's two weeks on, one week off, if I'm not mistaken. For the older ones, as you'll see here, it's every other week. So this week, uh, there, sorry, next week, there's one team that plays double, which is the U15, just to get them in. And then after that, all these guys are playing one week and then one week of the U15. So U9 is U9 2016s. That's correct. Yes. Like for our team? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, that's it. Um, any questions? I will stay on. If not, uh, feel free to go. Um, yeah. That's all. Well, uh, 